I think most people that visit, they're looking at all these things, wildlife and the remoteness of the area, and you're wondering what you're going to see and, and what's going to be different about this place. You're just trying to take it all in. It's almost like it's overload. It's a totally different environment that you're in. I was definitely excited. I was also quite nervous. Why choose Torn Gats? The beauty of it, the remoteness of it. We seen a polar bear within five, 10 minutes of being on the boat, which was absolutely amazing, the first polar bear that I'd ever seen. It was absolutely incredible to see this massive animal. It, you feel like you're, we're no longer at the top of the food chain, and, and suddenly you feel like the hunted. And it's kind of an interesting perspective when you look at the Inuit people that call this land home and you wonder, how did they survive? I mean, we have bear guards around us. We have a 20,000 volt fence around the base camp and, and you're looking back 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago and wondering how did these people survive? Not only in this climate, but with all these polar bears roaming around. You arrive at base camp and only after a short time of being there, it starts to feel like home. It's the focal point of the whole adventure. There's such an amazing mix of people. You never know who you're gonna run into. And it really starts to develop into a community. When I was there, really fortunate, there was a geology team that are looking for the oldest rock in the world. And we know, potentially, that it could be in the Torngat Mountains. We're talking an area that's four plus billion years old. When you're traveling through this area and you're looking at these mountains, then when you combine it with the age of them and the history of the Inuit people back there thousands of years, you know, it's just absolutely mind-boggling. They call it the land of the spirits, and, and the Inu would have this connection. And when I say the connection, you actually feel like there is something there. Getting out of base camp, it's really interesting because we would be hiking through these valleyways and mountains, and a bear guard would look and point at an old tent ring and say, oh, that's where my mother was born. It's something that I think the rest of Newfoundland and Labrador and Canada as a whole and even the world doesn't realize is that this culture is very much alive and people still choose to live on the land. We expect because of modernization that that is not something that one would choose to do, but it very much is.
So I remember being on uh, Rose Island, and we had a Inuit lady with us that has been born on the island. And she had been born in a sod house in 1948. And we walked down to a little beach, and she's talking about, as a child, playing on the beach. Like, I've never experienced that before, where you literally could see it. You feel like you're getting a very genuine experience when you're able to share in those memories with the people that are telling them. I'm so privileged to come here. I will never, never, ever forget this land. It's my homeland. And I think it's our perspective when we visit is that I'm going to this remote northern area. And what really struck me was how absolutely beautiful this area is, and it's her home. So this is not remote. So it was a total different, a change that, you know, my perception of the whole area that you suddenly realize that you're with people and this is their, this is their homeland. One thing that I found very surprising and very moving is the generosity of the people in sharing their personal stories. something that is typically very intimate was so easily shared. I had the opportunity to spend a, a bit of time in helicopters. I have an absolute death fear of heights, but of course you're gonna overcome it when you're in the Torngats. We flew out of base camp across crystal clear water, beautiful sunny day. We sat down at North Arm. We had a number of Inuit elders that were with us and I had the pleasure, they asked me, which is not a big task to ask me, was to provide the fish for the feast. So I immediately started doing the, some of the fish in. and we had an elder, and she started to uh, make some bannock uh, at the same time I was fishing. So at the end of it, we're all sitting around, and she was cooking it and heating it and keeping it warm on rocks, and landed a few fish and, and sat down, had an amazing feast, absolutely incredible. The Inuit, I've never met a group of people that are so connected and so much part of the land. You know, more and more they're returning because, of course, they were displaced over the years because of a number of different government policies. But when you're with them, you see that they never truly left. Out of all the parks I've been to, all the places I've been to, this is the only one that's had that impact on me where for days I was trying to figure out what's different about this place. And then when I was leaving, I realized what was different. It was the people. And, and I think that's gonna be the highlight for anyone that has the opportunity to go to the Torn Gap Mountains. You're gonna be absolutely amazed with the wildlife, the polar bears, the mountains, the rivers, waterfalls. It's an incredible area. I 
I've never been on a trip that has been so emotionally fulfilling. I think the biggest draw is the people you encounter. You can't separate the Torngat Mountains from the Inuit. They're one and the same. It's a very unique home to a very unique people. And, and you start to feel that. And, and I think once you do, then you realize what the trip was all about.